Okay, finally we end with one of my favorite topics, galaxy collisions and mergers. This is kind of like when companies collide and merge and become one on Earth, you know, same similar idea. Uh, these are pretty frequent events in the history of the universe. See here? This is, a gap. this is happening right now as we speak. But of course, it's not going to end. The collision is going to take millions and millions of years to be over with, you know, when these galaxies collide, you know. One of the things that students always first ask me when I mention galaxy collision is they'll say, when a galaxy collides with another, do the stars inside of them also collide head on? Okay? My answer to that is usually no. S the stars will not collide because the spacing between the stars is just so big. So even though galaxy with millions of stars and another galaxy with millions of stars, they're colliding, the stars are spaced out so much from each other that it's not likely that a star will actually collide. Okay? So the stars inside them don't collide for the most part. Yeah, that's a good question. Very, very good question. If, if our galaxy collides with another galaxy, which it is likely to do, will that have any effect on us? Well, another star from another galaxy, if, we com if it comes close to us, even though it doesn't collide with our sun, it might yank away a planet from the sun. Or it might disturb the orbit of the planet so much so that the orbit actually changes, okay? So what uh, influence could that have on our solar system? It could disrupt the solar system. It could yank away Earth from the solar system. It could yank away Mars. It could disrupt the orbit of Earth pretty dramatically. So it's not fun. I mean, it could really damage the Earth's orbit. So it's a good question. So even though the stars don't collide, it could yank things away and cause really real trouble for us, you know? Okay, so here's what the, some of the events that could happen when stars collide. When two stars merge and come together, they could form a burst of new star formation. They could trigger lots of new stars. And I mentioned this before. I called it starburst galaxy, like the candy starburst, you know? This is M82. That's an example of that. Shells of stars could form around the central core. That's called NGC 3923. Shells of star formation could happen. A ring galaxy forms, the cartwheel galaxy. That's kind of one of my favorite ones, actually. I, I kept it here because I knew I wanted to show you. you see, the ring galaxy. These galaxies went through this one and form a ring there, you see? A cartwheel galaxy is a lenticular galaxy and a ring galaxy about 500 million light years away in the constellation Sculptor. It is estimated 150,000 light years across, has a mass of so and so and so and so, and basically they'll tell you, if you read more about it, they'll tell you how we think this formed. It's a really beautiful picture, okay? So one went through the other one and formed the ring. Uh, the cartwheel galaxy, uh, production of spiral arms can happen. That's the world galaxy. That means the, uh, uh, the galaxy can begin forming spiral arms. The antenna galaxy, that's actually a good one. I want to show you this one. We'll probably go a couple minutes over. So we can, I want to make sure I finish this. This is how we think the antenna galaxy formed. Two galaxies came. This is a simulation. And then they interacted. They interacted, and then they formed two antenna, like that. See? Antenna, antenna. And then this is the actual picture. This is a computer simulation. This is the real picture of that. So it's like they came. They went like that. And then the spiral arms came off like that. You know? That's a very interesting one. 
Okay, now in a larger galaxy, a very, very large one collides with a small one, just like a big fish eating a small fish, shark eating a small fish, whale eating a small fish. It just engulfs it. It completely takes over it. This is called galactic cannibalism. Like, just we have human cannibalism. One human eats another. The Milky Way will cannibalize the, remember the, I get, told you, the small Magellanic Cloud and the large Magellanic Cloud. Any other satellite of the Milky Way that's small enough, if the Milky Way collides with it, it will take it over. Galactic cannibalism. And the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. Other, on the other hand, ring galaxies, which is this one, they're probably the result of high-speed head-on collisions between galaxies of similar size, okay? So the other collision that the Milky Way is about to do millions of years later is the Milky Way is headed towards the Andromeda galaxy. The Andromeda is bigger than us. That's one, that one is a scary. What's going to happen when, we, when, ha when that happens? It, it could form a ring galaxy. It could disrupt the Earth's orbit. It could yank away Earth from the sun. Lots of dangerous stuff can happen. That one is going to be very dramatic. Yeah, if the black holes collide, they could eat up more matter, they can grow, lot, they could spew out a lot of energy. Yeah, so lots of stuff can happen. The two similar sized galaxy collisions are dangerous for solar systems, you know. Astronomers now believe that most elliptical galaxies formed as a result of galaxy collisions which used up their gas content. Remember earlier I said ellipticals don't have the power to create new stars. They have mainly old ones. This is one theory why we think that is the case. Thus, they no longer have any gas. This picture shows how we think this happened. Originally, there were gas clouds in the sky before galaxies ever, ever existed. They collapsed and they formed galaxies. One theory says the first galaxies that formed were mainly spiral. So you see, they're all spiral. So this galaxy is formed surrounding globular clusters, right? Then several of them started merging. See, merge, merge. Some of this collide and form. The ones that merge, one of the things that could happen, they end up as an elliptical. You see? So this one doesn't merge with anything. It's left as a spiral. This one merges forms elliptical. This one merges, forms elliptical. This one doesn't merge. So the ellipticals, if they are a result of the merger of two spirals, that means all of a sudden the spirals formed lots of new stars, and then that's it. They lost the power to create new stars. So that would explain why ellipticals have only old stars, you see? And then the spirals can keep making new stars, okay? There's lots of interesting topics in there. I hope you continue to study. So study for the test on Monday. This is going to be from lecture nine, from the sun lecture, all the way to the galaxy lecture, okay, lecture 12.